Oh, actually, let me share my screen. I forgot to do that. Hold on a sec. All right, it's three after. I think I have everybody on the attendee list. <clears throat> All right, let's go and get started. Uh, this is Joe Sherman. I just called. Oh, him. hey, Joe. Missed you. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. So, first up on the agenda, community time. Is there anybody on the call from the community who'd like to bring up a topic for discussion or an issue or just something? I don't think we have anybody who's not a normal participant, unfortunately. Uh, hi, I can represent the community today regarding uh, expansions and what we talked about. I'm currently helping a startup and they're exploring the idea of using cloud events uh, inside the application too, as in events and between functions to be cloud events too. And we're right now exploring how would the payload, the data field in cloud events should be structured. And I wanted to ask the community if anybody's done any research into this and if they have any schemas or uh, examples they could share. I know this was also brought up during the SDK call because there was a talk about having, about converting uh, events to cloud events say converting uh, S3, S3 new file events to cloud events put objects or stuff like that. Is there a schema for how data should look in that context? Is there anything else? Yeah, I want to avoid terrible XML and SOAP and whatever, so that's what I'm asking. There's a very slippery slope that you're on towards towards exactly that, um, where you have like a wisdom, it, it, talking about like common schemas means you need to have a way to anchor them. You're kind of right on the slippery slope towards whistle and soap and all that complexity. So uh, just be aware. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Because, because if you, if you, um, you know, as long as the character is preserved of, and this is just my opinion, as long as the character is preserved of, of event of these events being one-way things, and you don't start building the RPC framework on top of of the cloud events envelope, um, I think that's okay. Um, but from a standards perspective, I think we explicitly don't want to be concerned with what the data contains, and it's really just up to you. Does, does that help a lot or do, I'm wondering whether this should be started as like sort of an, an issue or Google Doc or something to sort of let people brainstorm and have a back and forth discussion someplace. No, I deeply agree that the, the cloud event like, shouldn't uh, add any restrictions regarding the payload. But I know I was just curious there is obviously no best practices because this is super super early and there is not even an SDK yet. But I was curious what ideas everyone have, and I want to avoid as many mistakes as I can. At least I should make new mistakes. Um, maybe maybe something will help, kind of on the on the uh, since we're compliance, our our implementations are by ways of a mapper. Uh, but we do have we have some some internal guidelines on how we think about structuring um, you know event payloads, and there's kind of a common set of of events, kind of the outer level. Then there's kind of the 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 emitting service has a set of of properties that it defines, and then the respective function has one. We call this the Asimov thing, which uh, the Asimov model, which is ABC. And uh, so the A is effectively you define for the platform what payload parameters always need to be in an event. Um, that might also define for yourself, you know, how you map those that from your payload into the cloud events envelope, what you promote. Then B is effectively for the respective module that emits. All the functions need to go and emit the same, the same metadata for an event so that you can go and parse them together. 
and then individual in individual function that emits stuff that can then have its own its own data so that before the the cloud event itself you have your kind of um your substructure which gives you a way to to enforce commonality across the system commonality across the module Clemens, would that kind of stuff that you guys are working on be useful to contribute to our primer or something along those lines that could help provide that guidance for everybody? Um, yeah, I have to, I think we even have a bunch of, like there's a stack of, of documents inside of Microsoft that um, describe, there's a whole philosophy of, of how our um, event pipelines work. And I don't think they're really secret. Um, it's just that they're not made for public consumption. They're just made for the internal consumption. I mean, still 30,000 people. Um, yeah, I have to dig up and have to find who's the author and whether they're okay with it. But um, that's something that I should um, go and take a look at. Yeah, put me, put, make a note in the, in the, uh, in the notes that I'll go and see whether I can find the uh, the ABC event schema rules because I think the abstract rules are really useful even if we don't want to go and define if we, even if we don't want to be specific here how they should look like I think some best practices would be useful yeah okay yeah if I can confirm I did look at what uh, Azure is doing with cloud events and how you're structuring events and I looked at what AWS had on the blog regarding how their internal events look like. And I was looking for some more like best practices, mistakes that were made and stuff like that. Anything is welcome. Yeah, you, you're already looking at the, at the uh, result of uh, several years of weeding out the mistakes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take a look one, once I'm back from my break. I'll take a look at uh, what I can mine up in terms of princ driving principles. I think that's the, the, the valuable stuff here. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Vlad. All right, Clemens. Uh, any other community time related topics? All right, cool. Moving forward then. Uh, logo. So Austin said he's not able to make it today. However, I believe <clears throat> this link he pasted here may be pointing to the latest version. I, that's weird that it's seven days old, though. I'm guessing he pasted the wrong link. And I think this is the last comment is actually the latest one he has. Um, I believe he did tweak some of the spacing around the C and the E. And when I was talking to him through Slack earlier, um, because he couldn't make the call, uh, the suggestion was to present it to you guys here, look it over, think about it. And then I think at some point, whether it's next week or maybe it's during the week or something, we'll do some kind of vote or something on it. Um, other than that, I'm not quite sure what you guys want to do with it. Any comments on this, suggestions on different ways to proceed or? Commentaries in general. Do people prefer this better than the current one we have? I mean, does it look like it's heading in the right direction? Do people not care? Clearly, no one cares. <laughs> I, th I think it looks a little bit better okay. with, the, with, with the updated font. I, I still think that we could, we shouldn't have a common way to describe event data. Or yeah, I think the sticker is going to be just the first two bits, not the, yeah. the tagline. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll tell Austin that uh, uh, at least one person seems like it's heading in the right direction. No other complaints, but obviously take time to think about it. And we'll probably review it again on next week's call, if not through the email list or something like that. But all right. Uh, any other comments before we move on to the next topic? Alrighty, cool. Um, so Austin obviously is not on to talk about any SDK updates, but I don't think there are any other than to say he did a doodle poll and according to the doodle poll, he, he believes that the, the next call is going to be July 18th at 1 p.m. Pacific. Um, I will nag him to send out a calendar invite to make sure that gets put out there for everybody to uh, accept. Um, Anybody have any other comments or issues to bring up related to the SDK work? 
Okay, moving forward then. Kathy, I believe you're on the call. Is there anything you'd like to update this working group on relative to your workflow sub working group? Oh uh, yeah, hi. Um, so we discussed, I, I think you know, the meeting minutes was posted to this, to the same um, document. Um, we discussed the uh, um, multiple use cases and then derive um, some requirements for um, for what should be put into the workflow specification. Um, yeah, that's about it, basically. And also some consensus, um, you know, yeah, what should, what would be needed for a workflow specification. And those are documented in the, yeah, in the meeting minutes of the, of that, of the meeting. Yeah. It's, it's right here, basically, right in the very next section. Yeah, then, you know, if you scroll down, you are going to see. Yep. Yeah, if you scroll down, you are going to see, uh, go, scroll down a little bit more. Okay. Scroll down a little bit more. Yeah, here. You're going to see some, oh, scroll up, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> up more. a little bit more. More, okay. Yeah, here. So here we have consensus, and then we have some uh, potential specification target something like that people can take a look and then I think in the next meeting we're going to um, go through the um, to have you know um, people present different um, models and then also to have uh, to go through comments on the spec yeah All right. so if people have any thought or any comment feel free to post them on the Google Doc All right. Sounds like you're definitely in the, the good stage of uh, requirements gathering and figuring out exactly this, the scope of what you're doing. So that's all goodness. Any questions for Kathy? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I would like to ask uh, any questions for the workflow from the team. Yeah. From for our members. You guys are awfully quiet today. I'm not hearing anything. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. We'll keep moving forward then. Um, I don't believe there's anything issue maintenance wise we need to deal with today. At least I apologize if there is something I missed. I just um, traveling, so I missed. I didn't get a chance to do a the normal scrub. Um, so why don't we go ahead and jump into PRs? Uh, Clemens, would you like to talk about your qualifying protocols uh, PR? Mm. Do you remember this one? <laughs> yeah, I, no, I do. I'm actually okay. looking at it. Um, yeah, so um, basically, this is about you know, how do we achieve the goal of interoperability, um, and what are the what are the what are the criteria for inclusion of um, of protocols into the core of the specification set, um, and when does it make sense for those for those protocols to be included? And I tried to make uh, a basically a fair rule for for when protocols qualify without reading the text to you which you're all very capable of um, I think the general the general direction is that the specification needs to be useful so if we define a transport binding um, and if we define encoding mappings those specifications must be useful for more than one implementer, because otherwise it just becomes an advertising surface. And that's something that um, I think this project should, if it can, avoid to promote more protocols in, because that's, that's not helping interoperability. So if someone, if a project wants to go, everybody can go and build their own protocol, of course. And everybody can go and define a cloud events binding if they want to. The question here is whether that cloud events binding becomes um, an official one, which means that its specification lives in the main cloud events repository. So this is what this is about. And I think, I think it can only do so if there is a realistic expectation that there will be um, other parties. And I'm not sure whether it's at least one party or at least two parties, but other parties who are unrelated to that project, who will be able to implement a mapping to the 
protocol using that specification without necessarily having to talk to the originators of, of that project in its protocols. So for instance, um, at, I'll, give you the, I'll give the example of Kafka. Kafka is not a open standard um, um, uh, in, in the sense the protocol is not an open standard, but it's a project, but it's broadly deployed and uh, there are actually secondary implementations of this Kafka protocol that are not made by the Kafka team. And we, like my team, as, as a party that implements the Kafka protocol without having you know, a close relationship with the Kafka project and just reading their specs, we would actually benefit from, from having, such, having such a definition. Um, without a project having a, a formal protocol definition, um, that is a pure wire specification that, that is, is locked down so that it doesn't change when the code of the, the project changes and Kafka qualifies for that. Um, it's difficult to see how a, um, how a uh, um, you know, specification, cloud event specification, a general one that sits in the, in the uh, main repository helps. Um, I think with formal interoperability standards, um, protocol standards, that story is a very different one. Um, MQTT and HTTP and AMQP are effectively protocol first efforts where you first define the protocol and then you define a variety of different products that all use them um, and where additional specifications and, and these extension specifications that clarify their use on that protocol clearly help. Um, in the concrete case of Pulsar, so I have to go and pick on that one because that's the example. Um, it's not clear, or um, actually also the other PR that's there is open messaging. It's not clear to me how the existence of those specifications helps anybody but the, that project and are therefore effectively just, just advertising vehicles um, for those projects inside of uh, the, the cloud events repository. So that's my, so I'm, I'm trying to set a rule, I'm trying to write a rule that is driven by the usefulness of those specifications. And it's also driven by the spirit of not everybody ought to go wrong and, and just create their own protocol because that doesn't help interoperability. What we're trying to do is we're trying to unify things and we're not trying to accommodate 28 different protocols, but rather go and, and really pick favorites um, so that um, we achieve highest possible interoperability. And effectively the favorites that we pick are different enough that they, that they cover kind of the broadest possible area. We have HTTP um, for request response web messaging. We have um, MQTT for lightweight pop sub, and we have MQP for you know, transactional uh, messaging, and there's other protocols that go, go in and fill similar roles. Um, but we should not go and allow for um, proliferation of arbitrary number of protocols because that's actually counter the goal that we ought to have here, and that is drive interoperability um, for um, for eventing. So that's that's what I try to do with that. Any questions for Clemens? Comments? I have a question. So currently, which one? is considered the, I mean, the standard for the, the particle standard for this, for this cloud event spec? So we have, we have MQTT, we have MQP, and we have, we have uh, um, HTTP as the canonical ones. And NATS, um, I, I'm, I'm not sure how many, how, so for, because we have NATS in the repo, um, and that's, I'm not sure whether that slipped through the cracks because I don't know how many, how many uh, uh, implementations of the poor protocol of NATS there are, but my belief is that there's actually more than, because NATS has a pretty um, well-defined protocol specification. Um, so I'm assuming that there's more than one, more, more than one implementations of the NATS protocol that, and that would also make NATS kind of qualify. Uh, this, this is Colin, there are. And with, with NATS as well, we also are uh, doing some pretty heavy Kubernetes integration with operators, yeah. and we also integrate with Prometheus. So I, I think yeah. that will help with the cloud events efforts in the CNCF. Yeah, and, and so that's why I think, I think NATS is one where I had no, uh, NATS didn't, didn't trigger any, um, 
didn't trigger this this problem with me, but um, I think there's a as if there are efforts that are kind of more, uh, you know, they're open source projects who then choose to go and define their own protocols rather than adopting existing ones. Where it's not clear how that new protocol is rationalized versus the existing ones, then um, blessing those with, um, you know, official support from the cloud events project is actually not helping our joint goals of, of better interoperability. If, if the protocol itself, has already kind of, you know, is category defining as for instance, Kafka is, that's a different story. Um, but it, otherwise, if it's not a, a proper protocol definition that stands on its own and has different, implementa different implementations and also competing implementations, I'm more skeptical because my goal is to drive interoperability through protocol and not interoperability through names. So I, I see here there I see one of the um the statement said you know uh, mentioned web sockets or events on the web are those the standard those hang on HTTP I think that's yeah that's good right I think everyone using that MQTT is fine how yeah, about the so web sockets on the web those what, are, are generic so enough everyone using them. So WebSockets is a very broadly adopted um, mechanism. Um, and, and so as much as we're mapping to HTTP, so our mapping to HTTP is actually generic. Um, so it's, it works for HTTP 1.1 and HTTP 2. I took WebSockets in, even though we don't have an official binding as an example, um, that's a protocol that everybody is using and that everybody is, um, and everybody means it's very broadly used. Um, and there will be the need and people will go and put, put cloud events onto a WebSocket. The question is whether we need to have a proper binding for it. We maybe ha have to eventually. Um, but that's, an, that's, a, that's a protocol that clearly qualifies for us to go and do work for because it is so broadly adopted. And because it is not tied to a one single particular project, it's, a, it's, a pure, it's an interoperability protocol. I have a quick question on uh, my understanding is that the uh, events would be part of the payload and in most of these messaging protocols, the payload is actually a serialization problem uh, for interoperability versus the uh, transport problem or if I can get it to the uh, producers and the consumers regardless of the uh, transport, uh, I still need to have a common serialization. And uh, this is where most of these are, you know, how do I represent a stream, a map, or do I use just a binary transport and use something like Google, Google protocol buffs or some other serialization to represent it where I don't care about the language or the operating system, or they would just keep it as JSON and just do a string serialization. Uh, so how, how, how is that uh, being addressed to make sure you will get that interoperability where it might come in as a web socket and then go out potentially as AMQP where I want the payload of the event to be the same. Yeah, so, so I recommend that you read the AMQP specification and the MQT, MQTT specifications because they are actually doing exactly that. So those two specs take a cloud event, our info set, uh, which is our abstract model and actually project them onto an MQT, MQP message and projects them onto the MQTT publish packet um, and basically take things from our abstract model, like for instance, the content type and project them onto the appropriate property in the MQT published packet and onto the appropriate property in the MQP packet. So it's not just that you take the event and just stuff it into the, into the payload. We actually define, are defining rules for how that actually works. So we have a, we have um, uh, media types um, that are appropriate which are indicating to the receiver that this is an AMQP um, cloud event that's carried in the payload if we're using the structured mapping. We also have a way to go, and if you don't want to use the JSON serialization, but you're actually carrying significant size data payloads that are binary, we have a binary mapping, We've, we have that defined. So, so basically what the transport 
the transport mappings are due that we have in the in the repository today is they are defining rules for how to take a cloud event and project that out onto the HTTP message, um, onto the MQP message, and onto the MQTT publish packet. Okay, I'll definitely have a closer look at that. Yeah, so it's, it is really is it explicit. And the reason we're doing that is because we want to have broad interoperability and we just want to make sure that if, an, if a cloud event gets stuffed into an HTTP request on one side that it gets comes out uh, understood as, an, as a cloud event event on the other side and, and more importantly if you have multi-hop routes over messaging systems um, where the message also gets stored on disk and sorry for the church bells in the background um, if it gets um, uh, stored on disk uh, and then gets resurrected and then routed to someone else, that basically that integrity of the message is preserved and never gets lost. Um, and, and for that, it's, it's required that we actually have a, a clear notion of, of what the projection looks like. So take a look at the specs. Okay. All right, any other questions or comments or comments? It, it, to me, this is one of those things where it's a potentially very touchy subject, uh, political in nature. Um, but if we are going to have some sort of bar at all in terms of what we accept for uh, specifications into our repo, then obviously we'd have to very, very clearly define that bar. And I think uh, this is a good step at defining that bar. So let me ask uh, the high order question. Um, do people object to defining a bar at all? Or should we allow everything in? Hi, this is John. I, I totally agree that there, there needs to be a bar. And I, I think the, the rationale that was just explained, I, I, I think that's very important to, to, uh, to the goals of uh, interoperability. OK. All right. Anybody else want to comment on that? Okay, I'm not hearing any objections to the idea. Oh, I'm sorry. There oh, I'm curious uh, if there's a <coughs> past experience that uh, specifications have been used for. Uh, <coughs> sorry, bad timing. Um, for advertising efforts in the past. <laughs> I can I can think one or two, but I don't really want to mention them by name because I don't want to pick on people. Yes, this has happened. <laughs> and I've seen it more than once. Yes. Where, yeah, it, this, this, is not, this is not unusual that uh, people will try to piggyback their, their, um, their things onto larger trains. Also, I, I don't want to necessarily mention it. I, this is, this is a, a very common occurrence. All right, well, thank you for uh, addressing my ignorance. All right. Yeah, I guess I, I, guess I could just chime in and right? So uh, relative to this organization at this time, right, I'm more on the, the usage side of the, of the fence. Uh, and for sure, you know, the, the number of vendors that come to me, uh, you know, pitching their stuff and, and how that gets pitched, yes, I see variations of this regularly. Yeah. Everybody wants to promote their stuff and uh, they'll take every opportunity they can to do so. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. I think it, I think it's good to define some criteria, but I, I I think it's probably better for um for people to look through this to see whether, you know, all these descriptions um are good for everyone. Yes, I I, I was not going to push for a vote today. But I, don't worry about that, Kathy. Yeah. <laughs> The, the, the consequence, the consequence from not having a law on this is that um, down, down the road and, 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 setting, and setting that bar now is um, that down the road when the hawk has left the building, which means Doug is no longer our fierce leader um, because he's moved on to greener pastures, that effectively you can get into compliance with cloud events by submitting a spec that maps to whatever the proprietary thing is that you have. And then you can go and, and put the badge compliant onto your thing because you had a mechanism to go and sneak it into the repo. And that is just not right. 
Yeah. Okay, so I'm not hearing any objections to defining a bar. So now the question then is, is the bar that Clemens here has defined the appropriate one for, for us to have at this time? Um, as I said, I'm not gonna push her a vote on this today because I suspect most people have not had a chance to read it. But given what Clemens has described, does it sound like it's the right general direction for people or do people have concerns with the way he described it? Because if they're concerned, I'd like to try to bring those up now and then see if we can address those quickly. The only concern I potentially have here, and it's not that that big one, but I just, I am. It feels like we're making a bit of an exception for Apache Kafka specifically, and I understand, you know, the reasoning behind it here. I'm just wondering if, if you know, are we concerned at all, uh, kind of about that slipping in? I've been struggling with that, um, and I think with the. Kafka is special, and I don't currently see, at least from where I sit, um, I don't see anything that is even close to that right now in, in the messaging space as in terms of category defining. Like there's a, there's a pattern that is currently taken effectively by, like if you look at, at large installations, like the just volume of stuff that goes through it, there's effectively two large, well, three large implementations, right? There's Kinesis, there's EventHubs, and then there's Kafka, which is what everybody else is using. So that protocol has become de facto the way how you do event ingest, ingest and, 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 and reading. So it's, there, hasn't been, there hasn't been a formal standards body form to then first made that protocol but kind of has emerged out of a multi, multi company collaboration that is the Apache Kafka project. And they have had the discipline to go and, and put a protocol spec up that actually holds up to third party implementation as we've proven. So that's why, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm taking that as the example and actually the sole example I can think of that is um, that I would consider worthy but I agree that it's, um, it isn't a protocol first effort. So it's a little, it, I agree that it might look a little iffy for that, for there to be an exception, but I just think because it's category defining and it's hard to contest that it's category defining, it's the thing I call out as special. And I, as I said, I, I'm happy to take any, any corrections to that stance. And if we think we need to go and admit it and make another rule, or we're not going to make an official official um, binding for Kafka, um, but we treat Kafka as an extension. We create effectively anything as protocol proprietary, uh, project proprietary as an extension, a thing that where effectively the project needs to go and define its mapping. That's fine with me as well. So if we if we want to go and 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 have the the rule that there's got to be a standard protocol, the standard protocol protocol needs to come out of a, a you know, multi-party standardization effort and only then we're going to go and, and, and do the mappings. That will work for me as well. I just think that we will help ourselves by, by making, by carving out that extra little corner for Kafka specifically. So, so Dan, uh, did you try and approach Confluence team to try and potentially and maybe even create a standard? Because I assume you know you guys have a compatible, Kafka compatible implementation, every version, the Delta and something that's probably probably also create challenges for you. We also have a, a Kafka compatible implementation. So uh, would it make sense to try and get them to write some protocol? So so I would approach the, the, the Kafka project per se and not necessarily one company that, that contributes to it. Um, we, um, we actually have committers uh, in Microsoft who work in LinkedIn um, for the Kafka project. Um, and yes, we have, um, we're, we're contemplating whether we want to go and, and um, propose making that a standard. But we certainly have the intent of um, showing up in the Kafka project as, um, you know, raising our voice on the protocol side of this. Um, but that's in the early stages. So I think, I think that's, um, I certainly, we certainly have now interest with a third party implementation of it. Um, server implementation of it. We certainly have interest in having that go um, in an orderly fashion and not just go where the, the, the Kafka project wants to, you know, wants things to go. At the same time, they actually have a pretty good community process now where, um, um, you know, they have 
proposals and like they have a real process that they are following that which is pretty involved so, and and they're now shipping uh, confluent which is a big driver they're also now shipping services which is um, um, going to curb their exuberance of adding new things to the protocol um, and so um, I'm I, I'm happy with it where things stand but kind of kind of promoting that into a a standards thing would certainly be helpful. So we'll have to have a conversation and some a conversation that we want to have but we haven't had yet. Yeah, that's why I'm not sure you want to give uh, such a discount and, and make it an exception. Maybe you actually want, uh, you know, the Kafka group to go and, and come and, and form a server sort of standard or uh, even a draft of, of protocol. You may, uh, you may be right. And I think that's, I think that's probably, that's, you're probably making a good case there. Yeah, you want to motivate them to serve, um, to form, form, form a draft protocol versus giving them the discount to, uh, you know, you can do whatever you want. So, so how do people feel about that? Because that's something that I, I, so I think, so I want to have a Kafka binding eventually because I think that's important for, the, for us. Um, it's just the question of where does that go? Do we do we make a draft and never, because that's the other way to, to do it, right? You can you make a draft, you put it into the repo, but never make it part of the part of the official uh, um, uh, part of the official standard, but just have something for people to look at. Or or you say, no, nah, we don't care about Kafka. The the problem is, it is it is such a dominant thing that I wonder whether we are damaging our own effort if we don't have a mapping for it. Yeah, I, I worry about other very, very popular things popping up into the ecosystem that have no intention of ever going to a, an official standards body, um, but it'd be really foolish for us not to have a specification for it. Yeah, and, and this is the only case right now that I can think of that um, is, um, where we we would exclude ourselves from the ecosystem, and we have no leverage against the the uh, or very little against the Kafka project um, because they're happy even without us. Um, so, yeah, I, yeah. I said I'm I'm torn. Yeah, the, the problem here, of course, is it it gets very very subjective in terms of what's a de facto standard versus just one one projects. Thing. Yes, that's that's true. Yeah, that's a difficult one. So clearly, people probably should think about. I guess that sentence I highlighted there, or the, the thought in general. Um, yes. Uh, are there any other high-level concerns or questions for Clemens? Because he's going to be vanishing for I think three weeks. That's uh, correct. Yeah. <laughs> um, or do people just need time to to look through the actual text itself? Uh, this is Colin. Um, so let's say you, you have another protocol, another messaging uh, system that wants to integrate down the road in a few years. Is there going to be some sort of, um, you know, defined, um, defined thing that this messaging system or, or transport needs to meet in general, just generically, uh, just for forward thinking, or would they have to go through the same process we're going through now? I think they would have to meet the same bar in terms of principles, like their, their protocol. So you can't come with a messaging system, but how, how about that? You can't come with a messaging system. You actually need to come with a protocol and that protocol needs to be implemented, not just by that messaging system, but needs to be implemented at least by, you know, two or three independent efforts. That's, that's actually the bar that we put up for uh, in Oasis. Um, there's like, if you want to promote a specification into a, um, into an official, you know, release spec, you must prove as the standards project, even that there, you have at least three, um, uh, independent implementations of that thing. And I think that's a, I think that's a good measure for, for interoperability that, um, you can't come with a system. You can't come with an implementation. You really need to come with an interop spec. So, so I, yeah, I think that's a good point. I think it's better to put that the criteria uh, clearly spell it out 
one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, five, so that in the future, if someone would like to propose a, a new transport or particle, you know, we can see, you know, whether it satisfies all those criteria. I, Kathy, I'm assuming you're asking for, in essence, that, that, that numbered list appears somewhere in this document. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's very clear and objective. Is that okay with you, Clemens? Oh, the, the, the number of, of implementations? Yeah, no, I, no. Well, well, well just the, the list of criteria, like the number of oh, implementations. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I can go and add that. It's, it's, this was effectively the, the what I wrote here is, is was meant to be put into primer. Um, I think this might. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know where that goes. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think I can go and make a bullet list of principles. Yeah, I think that'd be useful because while the text you have here is is good. Whoops, fudge. Uh, well, the text here you have is all good. It's a lot to read, and I think narrowing it down to a bulleted list that people can digest very, very quickly would be really helpful for understanding purposes. Yeah, the TLDR. Yeah, exactly. Yes, for those yeah. of us who can't and, read. <laughs> and, and, and I think it's important that there is actually a there there. Uh, we had a discussion on the, um, uh, in, the, in the PRs and in the issues um, uh, just this week on, on the particular PR, uh, the one about open messaging. Um, where there's actually no protocol and there's no encoding um, to map to. And if that is not given, then you can't make a spec because that spec is not going to help anybody. It literally needs to be like, there's a, we have now a protocol, a protocol uh, architecture has emerged here where we have kind of an abstract data model and that maps into formats and that apps it maps into protocols. And if there's no protocol to map to, and if there's no event format to map to, well, then you can't write a mapping. And so that's, that's something that we, and, and that's not, you know, that's not evil from, by, by me to give that feedback. That's just the fact that it doesn't fit into the architecture. Um, so I'll, I'll summarize that into, into a few bullets as an, as an extension to this one. That'd be helpful. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I guess. Um, Go ahead. Kathy. I think in the next, yeah, I think in the next meeting, we can go through those bullets and then to see if everyone agree with those. Uh, yeah. Would be good. Yeah. Because this is like, uh, uh, we're defining the criteria, right? We're not like just, just defining a specific particle. So I think the criteria are very important. Yeah, so before, before the next meeting, uh, even though I will be not be participating, um, you will have that list. I will go in and make that as my as my homework for tomorrow. Excellent. Thank you. Sure. All right. Any last comments or questions? I think we've completed our uh, deep dive on this one. All right, cool. Thank you, Clemens, very much. So please, everybody, take it when you get a chance. Please review the document. Um, we'll try to see what we can do in terms of uh, voting or approving it next week or discussing next week. Um, if anything big comes up, uh, you may have to defer it for a couple of weeks as Clemens will be on vacation, but uh, if it's not controversial, then maybe we can get it in. We'll see how it goes. All right, cool. Thank you, Clemens. Um, now, next on the agenda was this transfer binding. Uh, I put this here only because it's kind of related to the previous one Clemens just talked about, but I'm wondering whether it makes more sense to actually defer this until after we resolve Clemens PR before we start reviewing another transfer binding to let in or out. Does that sound fair to defer it? I think that's the right way to do it okay. because the, the, the prior one exists because of this one. Right. Exactly. And well, and the next one. Yes. These, these, these yeah. two, these two. Yeah. So is there any objection then to deferring these two until we have uh, the, uh, the well-defined bar in place? Okay. We'll do that then. All right. Um, now, next on the agenda, as I mentioned, it's a little bit scatterbrained because we don't have anything really earth-shattering earth that we need to discuss. Um, Kathy, for your correlation label um, PR, I decided to, to almost try to defer that because I want to have some more offline discussions with you. I know we didn't get a chance to sync up this week, but I'd like to try to see if we can sync up before next week's call. That's why I kind of put that a little bit further down the agenda, if that's okay with you. 
What I'd like to do instead is to talk about just extensions in general, because I think there may be some disagreement in terms of uh, where we want to allow extensions um, in our serializations, in particular things like the JSON format and stuff like that. And what I wanted to do, if it's okay with people, is to quickly walk through some uh, scenarios or use cases to see if we can get agreement on whether we as a working group want to support those types of use cases or not, because I think that will help solidify the extensibility mechanisms that we want to uh, support in our specification. Is that okay with people? Okay, we, we actually only have about seven minutes. Um, go ahead, Kathy, sorry. Sorry, uh, I think we already have some use cases and use scenarios, right, in the, in the, in this, in the repository, right? Are, we, are you copying those over or these are something, is this something new? This is different. This isn't use cases for using cloud events. This is use cases around extensibility points. Right, so it's a, for example, it's a question of, do we want to allow extensions at all? Or do all cloud events only have the properties that we define in our spec, right? That's one use case. Do we, if we want to, if the answer is yes, we want to allow extensions, then okay, do we want to allow extensions only in an extensions bag? Or do we want to allow it in this other spot over here? Those are the kind of use cases I wanted to see if we can get agreement on because I don't think everybody in the working group is on the same page. And I think we have to answer those questions before we can go too much further on some of the other topics like your correlation label bag. So first, probably, you know, um, I think we need to think about what will, what's the criteria to, to, for the group to, I mean, to make a decision on what goes into the, uh, the official spec and what goes into the non-official extension. Is that, I'm not sure whether everyone is clear, is on the same so, page as to the, that criteria. Uh, go ahead, Kevin. And then... Go ahead. Yeah, so, so, so the question here really, with the mechanisms that we have in place today, I think ultimately the question is whether you're, um, it, the one that you're using in your example is always the room and the floor and like the building example, right? Um, whether those, the room and the floor are extensions and whether they're not and i think so i've been i've been thinking about this a bit and i actually commented on your um also commented on your pr and i'm coming to the similar conclusion that doug comes to i think and that is um that your correlation bag more or less already exists if you if you if you allow yourself to say the room and the floor and uh, the building are really extensions to the f event format. And if you allow them to be at the outer level of the event, then you don't need to have that extra bag, which means your correlation properties bag per se is already existing because we allow arbitrary extensibility on the event per se. And what we need is a set of rules to effectively deal with potential collisions. But we can go in and, and, and use the event in a way that we say, um, you can do, you can put whatever you like onto that event. And the only thing that, the only thing we're concerned about is future collisions. The future collisions can only, and, and, ulti and ultimately, and ultimately, what's important to note here, and this is this is something to to um, internalize, is that the only party that can ever create collisions is the publisher. So the publisher creates an event, and the publisher basically sets all the properties on the event. Then the event flows, and. And if the publisher doesn't see any doesn't see any collision risk, which means it takes the standard cloud events properties and then adds, you know, room and floor and building, that's fine. And then it's just up to the receiver at the other end to go and take a look at the event type, and then basically expect those three fields to exist at the outer at the outer um, uh, level of the event. Now there's a difference here 
And that's also something I talked about with, with Doug separately. For cases where um, you have an external standard that you need to adhere to, like you have a, a set of properties that are defined from, some, from somewhere on the outside, like I'll pick OPCUA as a standard. Um, uh, you can go to automation ML, you can kind of use any, any sort of existing standard. And let's say they are defining a source or they're defining a property that's colliding. Then with the mapping rules we already have in place, the one thing that, I've, that has been accepted already in the HTTP spec um, that I submitted yesterday, we actually have a mechanism in place where you can go and add a property, let's say that call that OPC UA, where you can go and put all the OPC, UA, prop, OPC, UA, property, OPC UA properties into a bag and they get serialized appropriately into transports and they get included as a bag into um, the serialization but it's a top level extension. And it's a top level extension where you can go and avoid any clashes with the existing cloud event schema by sticking them into the back. But you can do this today with the mechanisms that we have at this today without having that extra property bag, which means the requirement that you have by adding extensibility items that you need for correlation is already satisfied with the spec per se, as we have it, if we say, we are allowing arbitrary top-level accessibility. So, so I, I think I'm first. I'm not sure whether we should allow arbitrary, you know, top-level, um, uh, any anything, you know, the any vendor can put in at the top level. Um, um I don't know whether that's uh, the but, right but, way to go. But see, um, but see because how... it could be thousands of people. Uh, so, so remains the building number. But room number is just an example. Uh, so I, I'm not sure whether that that's a little misleading or not. It's just an example. It could be a travel mm -hmm. request ID. Yeah. It could be it could be anything. There could be, you know, so but for a specific event source, it won't be it would not be, you know, a lot. It will be just one or maybe two or three. But you know, because of different uh, um event <coughs> the uh, correlation label, or we call or we call it identification label, could be different. So, um, so that's why I think you know um, it's good to put into a, a bag because I, I don't think why you know uh, why this bag becomes such a, a issue because this bag is clearly um, defined. It's not like just say a, a very generic generic bag. So, um, so I, I, Kathy, Kathy, let me jump in here and I apologize. I should have actually jumped in a lot sooner. Um, I didn't want to say discuss your particular PR yet. I was hoping to discuss the broader issue of extensions. And I apologize. Um, we, kind of, we got a little bit off track, but then I realized we were running out of time anyway. So I decided to let it go since we're not going to probably be able to have the time to, to, to deep dive into extensions in general. Um, so I, I, because I don't think we have time right now to talk about either issue, I'd almost rather not start and run the risk of running over time and people, you know, being late for their next meetings. Yeah, I do. So, I'm going to be late for my next meeting. So it would be great if we could. Start. Yeah. Right. So let me do this. So I, I put this document out here for people to put comments on, to give their opinion, like Rachel has, has just did on here. So please go through this particular Google doc, add your opinion about whether those particular use cases relative to extensions in general are ones that you'd like to see a support or not. Kathy, I'd like to get together with you uh, probably next week because I'll be on the West Coast. So time-wise, we should be able to sync up much better than we were able to this week to have a, a more in-depth discussion offline about your PR, if possible. And make, I'd like to at least have you understand better why there are concerns. And then we'll try to revisit this again on next week's call. Is that okay with people? Because I don't think we have time right now to deep dive on any of this stuff. Okay. So not hearing any objection, let me just quickly do the final roll call. Eric um, asked to paste the Google Docs link into this uh, oh, or chat. Okay, hold on a sec. It is in the agenda, but- I got, I got it. Oh, you got it? Cool, okay, thank you. All right, quickly then. Um, obviously I heard Kathy. So Rachel, I heard Clinton Reeves, are you there? Clinton? What about Stanley? Hey. Hello. Farad? Hi, I'm here. Hello, Louis, are you there? Yes. And, and oops, there you go. Hello, uh, Louis, I got, Eric, are you there? Yes, I'm Okay, Brian, I think I heard you already. Dan Barker, yep. are you there? Yep, I'm here. Okay, and Chris, Chris. Christoph. 
Yeah, I'm here. Excellent. And I'm back to Clinton Reeves. Are you there? All right. Is there anybody I missed on roll call? Okay. So please, as homework assignments, please make sure you review Clemens PR uh, for the bar that we're going to be setting for allowing new specifications into our group. The extensions use case doc, uh, I'd like to get some feedback on that. And I believe those are the two homework assignments. Oh, review the logo um, and comment on that in uh, Austin. And I think it's an issue, not a PR. Uh, please comment on that if you have any feedback on that one. All we right. now have three weeks to break stuff. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> With you gone, Clemens, we're gonna be able to get so much in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Any, uh, last, any last minute questions, comments? We've got about a minute. All right, cool. Thank you guys very much. And we'll talk to you again next week. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.